we are finally ready to answer the question, what is atheism? I say finally because I have a previous video which lays the groundwork for this one, and because in my nearly 10 years on YouTube, I don't think I've actually bothered to make a video about this. So, the time is now. From my previous video on the burden of proof, we know that for any particular idea, such as the idea that at least one god exists, there are three conclusions a person might choose to defend. You can affirm it, reject it, or maintain the null hypothesis. Guilty, innocent, or not guilty. So the question is, when it comes to the idea that god exists, what should we call these propositions and the people who believe them? Which of these, if any, is atheism. But first, two disclaimers. Number one, ultimately this video is about words, and words are just tools for conveying ideas from one person to another. If you don't find my tools useful, then you are under no obligation to use them. The conclusions I draw in this video are just the ones that I find most useful for framing these types of conversations. And number two, when I talk about the idea that God exists, what I'm referring to is any proposition which says that at least one specific god being exists, whatever you call it. It's just easier to say god. So what should we call these three propositions and the people who believe them? We have a lot of words to choose from, but I think only a subset of them are relevant to this discussion. Feel free to challenge me on this in the comments section if you disagree. Now, which words should describe each proposition? Well, I think it's pretty clear that theism is the guilty conclusion with regard to the God claim, so I think we can safely put it here. So what about the others? Well, always a good reference is the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy defines theism as the proposition that God exists, and atheism as the proposition that God does not exist, and theists and atheists are the people who accept these propositions. I think these definitions are useful, but incomplete. I think they make sense as a way to classify the arguments, but they fail to describe the null hypothesis, which is important. As far as the arguments go, this binary distinction makes perfect sense. Arguments for the proposition, God exists, might include the teleological argument and the moral argument whereas arguments for the counter-proposition, God does not exist, might include the problem of evil and the problem of divine hiddenness. Now, of course, each of these arguments has its own daisy chain of counter-arguments, but fundamentally, these are the two categories of arguments that exist within the God debate. It is a binary system. This, I think, justifies the way in which the SCP breaks up the God debate into just two propositions, X and not X. However, as I said, I think this framework is incomplete. Most conspicuously absent from the SCP's framework is the null hypothesis, which is a perfectly valid conclusion for a person to draw in light of these arguments. It's the conclusion a person would draw by being aware of the pro-God arguments and discounting them. It is the proposition that there is insufficient evidence to support the particular God claim in question. To show what I mean, let's look at the SCP's framework when it comes to the claim that we are brains in vats. With regard to this claim, you can either believe it, believe its negation, or you can simply be unconvinced of it. Guilty, innocent, or not guilty. There could certainly be arguments for and against this claim, but most people, including you and me, probably fit into this third category. We don't believe it because there is no convincing evidence, but we don't claim it's outright negation either. We sit comfortably at the null hypothesis, generally operating under the assumption that we are not brains in vats, even though we agree it's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. However, there doesn't appear to be any room in the SCP's framework for this conclusion. There's no room for the null hypothesis. So, what is the name for the proposition that there is insufficient evidence for the brains in vats claim? What do we call the null hypothesis? Most people would probably say that the null hypothesis in the God debate is best described by the word agnosticism, because, well, it's kind of in the middle, right? 
I'm not an atheist, I wouldn't go that far. I'm really more of an agnostic. Unfortunately, I think this word is simply not a good fit for the null hypothesis. Why do I say this? Well, because I think the word agnosticism better describes a different group of people around this debate. There are people who claim that the answer to the God question simply isn't knowable with any reasonable certainty either way, so there's really no point in even having the conversation in the first place. They might say this for considered philosophical reasons, or just social politeness, but whatever their motivation, these people do exist, and they are categorically different from the people who have engaged with the arguments, and who maintain that the evidence just isn't good enough. The people who claim that the answer cannot be known at all are the people who I would call agnostic, that is, without knowledge. You will follow the agnostic code. We cannot know with certainty if God or Christ exists. They could. Then again, there could be a giant reptilian bird in charge of everything. Can we be certain there isn't? No, so it's pointless to talk about. Now say it with me. The Stanford Encyclopedia's entry on agnosticism is, ironically or fittingly, not very certain, and it acknowledges the use of this term both as a proposition and as a psychological state of not knowing. My takeaway from the SCP is that the term agnostic can be used in both ways. A person might be an agnostic, the noun, who thinks that the debate is doomed to be fruitless, or they might be agnostic, the adjective, such as an agnostic theist, who believes in God, but who doesn't claim certainty about it. So, for these reasons, I don't think the word agnostic is a good way to describe the null hypothesis. It seems to me that agnostic means something very different, representing either a deliberate divorce from the entire debate, or being used as a qualifier for the propositions within the debate. But if that's the case, then what should we call the null hypothesis? What is the name for the proposition that the burden of proof has not been met? Some people, recognizing this problem, will distinguish between two types of atheism, which they call strong atheism and weak atheism. Strong atheism, they say, is the negative proposition, God does not exist, whereas weak atheism is the null hypothesis. And this does fix the problem. The null hypothesis now has a name, and I do think this is a reasonable framework. However, and this is kind of a nitpick, I think these terms would benefit from being a little more specific, since strong atheism and weak atheism, in my opinion, don't really convey their meanings as well as they could. So what words do I think we should use? Well, it seems to me that if the proposition God exists is called theism, then the counter-proposition that God does not exist would most accurately be called anti-theism. This seems like the most straightforward term to describe the contrast between these two propositions. But then, of course, we still have the null hypothesis. I realize I've been talking for quite a while now, and we still have this problem. What are we supposed to call the null hypothesis? Well, I would say that because this proposition is basically just not theism, much like the not brains in vats proposition we all implicitly live by, it seems to me that the most appropriate word for the null hypothesis would in fact be atheism, or even non-theism if you prefer. This, I think, covers all the bases and gives names to everything we set out to give names to. Now, you might want to argue that I'm redefining the word atheism. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy was very clear, and here I am disagreeing with it because I like my word atheism. However, as I said, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy's definitions just don't seem to provide a name for the null hypothesis, so something's got to change here. And I do think the term anti-theism more accurately describes the proposition that a particular god does not exist, as a direct counterclaim to theism, which says that a particular god does exist. Now, so far, I have been referring to atheism as a proposition rather than a state of mind. But I think there is utility in having a word to describe a person who simply doesn't believe in any gods, whose worldview does not include any god beings, either because they think the evidence isn't good enough, or simply because they haven't been exposed to the idea. So what should we call these people? 
well, these people don't believe in any gods, so I think the best option might be to steal one of our null hypothesis words, non-theism or atheism, and apply it to these people. Either one is fine by me. However, in my experience, for better or worse, it seems that many people use the word atheism to mean both of these things, describing both the psychological state of not believing in God and the proposition that is the null hypothesis, depending on the context. I would prefer to call the psychological state non-theism and the null hypothesis atheism to make that distinction, but I might already be outvoted here, so I invite you to weigh in in the comments section. So what am I? Well, I would say that for most theistic claims, I am an agnostic atheist because I believe that the burden of proof has not been met for any of the God claims I've heard, but hey, I could be wrong. With regard to a select few God claims, however, I would say that I'm not just an atheist, but also an anti-theist, because I think that these particular God claims either cannot logically exist, making me a Gnostic anti-theist, or because I think these claims simply have strong evidence against them, making me an agnostic anti-theist. So there we have it. That is how I would define and use the word atheism. Of course, as I said at the start of this video, words are just tools, and this is not a hill I'm willing to die on, it's just my preferred toolkit. It's not perfect, but I think it is useful. Make of it what you will, and thanks for watching.